morning. Uh, welcome back to Chapter A. This is the second lecture of Chapter A. I'm going to be talking to you today about interval size. I'm going to share my screen with you. So when we talk about intervals, we label them with both a number which indicates the size and an adjective which indicates the quality. So when we use interval labels such as a minor second or a major sixth or a perfect octave, we're giving both the size and the quality. When we say major second or minor second, the major or minor is the quality, the number second is the size. I also referenced a major sixth, the sixth is the size, or a perfect octave, the eight or the octave is the size. The size of the interval measures how many notes it spans. And to uh, figure out the interval size, you literally just have to count. So for instance, over here, we have a, an interval with a, an F and a G. So we count one on the F, two on the G. It's a second. We always count one rather than zero. And so we're counting the total number of lines and spaces that that interval spans. From A to C, we would count one, two, three. This is a third. From G to D, we would count one on G, two on A, three on B, four on C, five on D. This is a fifth. You should fairly soon be able to recognize intervals just by looking at them because they're, they're each going to have a certain look. One of the most obvious features of an interval is whether both notes are on a line or a space, or whether you have one on a line or one on a space. Um, the even numbered intervals, the second, the fourth, the sixth, the octave, these all will have one interval on a line and one on a space. Let's take one of these bigger intervals and count it out. Uh, this is a C, D would be two, E would be three, F would be four, G would be five, A would be six. This is a six. But you probably soon won't even have to do any counting because you can see there a, a note on a line and a note on a space, and there's a complete space and a complete line between them, as opposed to the fourth, which is a little smaller. Um, there's only like half a space in between those two notes. The second, there's no space at all, and the notes can't even be written above each other. They have to be slightly diagonal. Odd-numbered intervals involve two notes on a line or two notes on a space. The unison, or uh, interval number one, is the same note. We have a third, a fifth, and you can see that the fifth, these two notes are on spaces, and there's one empty space in between. Here's a seventh. Both notes are on a line, and, that, and here, because it's a seventh, there are two empty lines in between. So it's a bigger interval than a fifth. And we can have an even bigger interval. This is a ninth. It goes from the low G to the high A. And this has three blank lines in between. Just a word of warning. Because of how we count intervals, starting on the one instead of starting on the zero, the math of adding up intervals is not at all what you would expect. So let's take the interval from D to F, that's a third. And now let's add another third to it. We go from F up to A. And so to figure out the spanning interval from D up to A, that will be a fifth. Yes, it is true that in, in uh, music theory math, at least in interval math, a third plus a third is a fifth, not a sixth. A little bit of additional terminology. Intervals can be melodic intervals where the notes are successive, one note follows the other, or they can be harmonic intervals, the two notes sounding together. So here's an, an example of a melodic sixth, which is descending, the same two notes written as a harmonic interval. This is a melodic interval, a melodic fourth ascending. This is a harmonic fourth. Notice that accidentals don't change the size of the interval, they do change the quality of the interval. And that means that it's possible to have enharmonically equivalent intervals that sound the same, but that have two different sizes. For example, 
Here is a fifth from F to C sharp. Here is a sixth from F to D flat. Now you would say, well, these, no, these sound the same. They're the same interval. Well, they are the same when you hear them, but when you see them, you can see that one is a fifth and one is a sixth. We'll talk about this more when we talk about qualities of intervals. One more example, from C to G flat is a fifth, from C to F sharp is a fourth. One more piece of vocabulary, compound intervals are intervals that are larger than an octave. These interval sizes are counted the same way as smaller ones, or you can figure it out using the kind of theory math that I showed you above on line three. Okay, so it's useful to think of compound intervals as being a smaller interval, what we call a simple interval, plus an octave. So if we take a second from G to A, and we add to it an octave from A to A, the second plus the octave adds up to not a tenth, but a ninth. And if you don't believe me, you can count this out and, and you'll understand that it is a ninth. A third plus an octave is a tenth. A fourth plus an octave is an eleventh. And a fifth, G to D, plus an octave from D to D is a twelfth. Those are not the only compound intervals. A sixth plus an octave is a thirteenth. A seventh plus an octave is a fourteenth. And an octave plus an octave is a fifteenth. But in this class, we're probably not going to be going beyond a twelfth very often. But you should be familiar with the compound intervals as well. Now you know about interval sizes. Next, we'll be talking about interval qualities.